Here in Canada, we're told to keep our distance from others and stay home. If you don't, you risk spreading the virus, making others sick and overwhelming the hospitals. Healthcare workers across this country are bracing for that. One Toronto hospital is doing everything it can to prepare, and tonight we take you inside the Humber River Hospital, preparing for war with an invisible enemy. I can tell you that our hospital and every hospital is doing everything it can to prepare for that surge. It's all hands on deck, everybody's rolling up their sleeves. My name is uh, Dr. Thaslim Nimji and I'm an ER physician and the Director of Medical Innovation for Humber River Hospital. So when I'm doing my administrative job, I'm helping the hospital and its preparedness for pandemic planning. That's us looking at how do we ensure that we have enough healthcare workers on the job to treat our patients. That's how do we make sure that we have enough equipment. You've heard a lot about ventilators, for example. How do we make sure we have enough beds and space to treat patients? Every patient that walks in as a patient is a human being on that other side. Um, and we can't forget that in this crisis. We have processes, triaging processes, where we ask screening questions to try to determine whether somebody is a suspected or a positive case for COVID-19. We are still seeing people that are coming in, anxieties run high, wondering if they have COVID-19, wondering if they meet screening criteria. We are seeing patients that are positive for COVID-19 already, known positive cases. This is a real concern. The amount of personal protective equipment. There isn't a hospital in, 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 in the province, in the country, that isn't concerned about having enough personal protective equipment to be able to take us through what we're about to experience. With the 9105 small. Okay. So this means donning, what we call donning personal protective equipment. Um, and this means putting on the appropriate clothing, right? And it's not clothing, it's surgical masks, it's gloves, it's gowns. Um, so that when you're treating that patient, you're then only wearing that equipment to protect yourself and then doffing what we call taking off that equipment in a very specific order so that you don't contaminate yourself when you exit that room. Ticket R 004. We've talked about flattening the curve and trying to decrease that burden and pressure on the healthcare system. We're still seeing cases increase uh, higher in number daily than we would want. Um, I do think that when you look at other countries comparatively, we may have started pushi pushing the message of social distancing earlier, but there are many of us that are wondering if we need to be more aggressive about that at this point. Concerns, anything that's uh, related to COVID? As we're here putting ourselves in, in harm's way for our patients, which we are happy and proud to do, but as we sit here and come here every day and work tirelessly long hours and our families help support us to do so, we need the community to do its part. People are going to be hospitalized and far worse, people are going to die. And we've seen that across the, across the globe. This is not something that's hitting us that we don't know about. We know what the ramifications are here. But if we're not aggressively implementing social distancing measures, then that is not, that's going to be a problem. That is going to be a problem for every hospital, every hospital in the country. With me now is Dr. Michael Gardam. He's Chief of Staff at Humber River Hospital. Dr. Gardam, all of us are so overwhelmingly grateful for all the frontline staff in hospitals and clinics across the country who are facing uh, what we're all facing, but theirs is such uh, an intimate um, and, and deeply personal risk. Um, what are your staff at the hospital telling you about their concerns and what their fears are? Yeah, certainly people are very worried right now. Uh, they have a number of worries. They worry about, will we have enough uh, personal protective equipment for all of us? What do we do if we get into difficult situations like what's happened in Italy where we have to make almost impossible choices over, you know, who gets access to certain medical care and who doesn't? Um, you know, they worry about their families. They, you know, I get questions like, am I going to be bringing this home on my, on my shoes? Do I need to leave my shoes outside? So, you know, for most people, this is a weird time, but for those of us in healthcare, it really is nonstop, every day, all day. Do you have um, answers for them? Well, you know, a lot of this stuff comes down to fairly common sense. I mean, if you think, for example, you know, people worried about their clothing, I mean, what we've done in the hospital is suggested that people, 
you know, don't wear, don't wear suits to work, wear clothing that you can easily wash when you get home. You know, in terms of worrying about your shoes having this, really if you're going to get infected with this virus, it's really in this area here, so make sure that your hands are washed and clean if you have to take your shoes off. Things like that we can give advice on. Things like the personal protective equipment is a really challenging one because obviously everybody's looking for it right now and it's very hard to get supply and so there's a lot of discussion going on right now about how do we um, conserve the amount that we have for when we get that wave coming in a few weeks and there's also talk even about whether there's opportunities to potentially try to reuse equipment that we've already used it's not something we would normally do but you know desperate times call for desperate measures you know that lost time means lost lives and it's so clear um, when we look at Italy what can happen when the system is overwhelmed. Can what happened in Italy happen here? Uh, yeah, absolutely what happened in Italy could happen here. I think that every week that goes by I feel a little bit more comfortable that we're likely not going to get into an Italy situation. Um, that doesn't mean we're not going to be overwhelmed. It's just may, it just may mean more that we're overwhelmed a little bit less than what's happening in Italy. You know, I take some comfort from other countries that have been able to control this without getting into that situation. Uh, and that's why, you know, we need to be so aggressive with the public health measures that we're taking right now uh, in terms of social distancing. That's really about preventing cases from spreading who then end up in our emergency departments and end up in our ICUs. All right, Dr. Michael Gardam, thank you. Thanks for having me.